and test. Sweet. Sour. So good to test. Welcome to Great Taste from Green Building Supply. I'm your host, Steve Boss, and you have tuned into 60 minutes of delicious food talk and hopefully a few uh, fun times in terms of jokes if people don't think that they're really that lame. But we'll have to wait and see about that. Okay, so thank you all for coming. Really glad to see you. You're supposed to clap now. You know, it's <laughs> excellent, excellent work. <laughs> We're here the first Tuesday of every month, courtesy of Green Building Supply, and Jason Strong is our engineer taking care of business for Fairfield Media Center, and so you can watch this at the YouTube channel, Fairfield Media Center YouTube channel, a couple of days after it actually takes place, right? Yes, uh, two days, right, two days afterwards. And the only thing that I want to add about the first Tuesday of every month is I'm kind of lying, because on... Tuesday, November 6th, we won't be here because it's election day. So we'll be here on Wednesday, November 7th. All right. So please remember that. Don't show up on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, November 7th. But the next show, which is Tuesday, October 2nd, those of you who have been here before, it, we are looking forward to our two little Italian girls coming back and uh, cooking for us. Um, they are really, <laughs> they're they're great, and, and so we're looking forward to them being here on, that would be Tuesday, October the 2nd. All right, so we've got a full show, lots of stuff going on. So first, I want to introduce Christy Welsh. Christy, I think you have to maybe come over here a little bit, oh. right? Oh, or maybe I need to go over there a little bit because you have all of your equipment over here. Yeah. And hi. Hello. We haven't known each other very long, have we? Just a few years. Yeah, just a few. Uh, Christy was Maybe 12. 20. <laughs> Almost 20. <laughs> yeah, she was 12 when we first met her. And she babysat our kids. And when we went to Italy back in 1998, mm -hmm. Christy said, she 97. said, 97, right, 97. I remember one day, I think you came over and said, hey, I'm going to come over there while you guys are there. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> and you did. You showed up. I did. <laughs> it's true. I, I flew all the way by myself when mm -hmm. I was 20. Right. To Italy. And, and you stayed with us for a couple weeks, maybe? Maybe three. Three? <laughs> that was, and that was outside of Verona, I think, wasn't it? Chiar yeah. Yeah, in, in Chiaro. Chiaro. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was so much fun. But we're not here to talk about Italy because we're not here to talk about cooking because you don't cook, but you do bake. <laughs> My husband can attest to that. <laughs> He's the cook in our house. Right. But you bake. Yes, I but do. But I heard he baked something. Yeah, he made his uh, sour cream coffee cake yesterday. It was delicious. <laughs> he got inspired by your post. <laughs> yeah, but he used a different recipe, though, right? He did. He found one that had the crumb on top because that's uh -huh. what he prefers. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. I made a sour cream coffee cake from Zingerman's Bakehouse recipe. It does not have any crumb on top. Uh, and it just has the nuts and the cinnamon and the brown sugar in the middle. And Terrell made uh, one yesterday, and I looked at it, and I'm like, whoa, that's different. That's not the same recipe. No, and it doesn't need to be, of course, uh, because there's all kinds of... But there's a great article, if you uh, want to look it up. It's, uh, I think it was, it was just published about two or three days ago by Amy Emberling, who is the co-author of the Zingerman's Bakehouse cookbook. And it's called Why Sour Cream Coffee Cake is Quintessentially Jewish. So it's something that you... you it's a fun article to read. And it's kind of interesting because in the bakehouse, which is in Ann Arbor, she says that it is the number one item. Sour cream coffee cake is the biggest seller of. Shelley, do you want to take? Do you want to take something? Because you can, if you like. Uh, anyway, it's the biggest seller every day, which is very interesting. And we love sour cream coffee cake at our house. So, yeah, there's. I made it on. I think it was Sunday, and I. I'm not sure, I'm not embarrassed at all to say that uh, there's really, I don't think there's one bite maybe left. That's that's all. It was uh, made in a bunt pan. Yours is, oh yeah, but you have four, two teenagers. That's totally different. This is Rachel and I, we ate the whole thing. So, oh well, whatever. I will say that Terrell is, my husband is a real mail carrier and he delivers Zingerman's, uh, c the catalog. So he's very interested in he ordered one the other day. Did you really? <laughs> That's great. The recipe, somebody just said, where's the recipe? I, if you find this article, actually the, the article, there are at least three articles that I saw online that have the recipe in it. So if you just Google Zingerman's Bakehouse Sour Cream Coffee Cake, 
you'll find the recipe online. And it and it's it's actually pretty simple and it's it's really good. I mean really good. But anyway, we're gonna Christy's busy taking blueberry muffins out of the oven because we have a very interesting <laughs> menu <laughs> on this show. <laughs> right. So we're gonna start off with the blueberry muffins and we thought that they would smell really nice when people walked in. And I see people nodding, so it does smell really nice. And then I'll tell you a little bit about the amuse-bouche that we had, which was the cheese dip. I call it party time cheese dip. And, uh, and then we have two more dishes that uh, we're going to get to. So tell us a little bit about these blueberry muffins. Well, these blueberry muffins, this is a recipe that came from our neighbor, who lived next door to Stephen and Rachel, and I also babysat their kids. Her name is Carolyn Bush. And one time she asked me to watch the kids while uh, she was on a cruise, so I had to make dinner for them. Well, you know, her husband was working anyway. I had to cook dinner. I didn't cook dinner for these kids very often. But the, this recipe was, the, was one of their main meals, watermelon and blueberry muffins for one night. The kids got to pick. Wait, wait, they had both watermelon and blueberry muffins, or only watermelon or blueberry yeah, muffins? That was their ma the meal that they picked to have together. Oh. Carolyn let them, like, pick their menu while she was going to be gone. So these muffins are delicious, and I, I yeah, anyway. So I'm going to make them for you. Okay. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, we can see the ingredients, but maybe everybody can't. I don't know. Can everybody see those ingredients or not? I'm, I mean, the, yeah, on the YouTube video, they can't. No, we don't care about you guys. If you can see them, that's uh, <laughs> so. All right. Well, as with any baked good, you start with your um, cr your sugar and your butter and your eggs. You cream. Well, you cream your sugar and butter together first, and then add your eggs, which I will do. I've already pre-measured everything. Now there is a, uh, there are a couple of secrets in this recipe. Um, you actually put the you mix some of the blueberries in so it gives the batter a rich purple batter color it's not white with a few blueberries mixed in there there's tons of blueberry flavor and the other uh, um, you know what i just want to say i walked in when you were you knew you had your batter already done for the ones that were in the oven and it was just gorgeous i mean the color was just spectacular and so much nicer than when you look at like a regular blueberry muffin like you just said and it's kind of like yellow and it's got a few blue things and yeah, no, it's it's like popping with blueberry flavor. The other secret ingredient I will reach here and show you is... Um, and what do you have to do? Not a, what did Jason say? I, he said six seconds. I'm, right. I, I, I'm just kidding you. I'm just giving you a hard time. Our, our producer told us that we aren't showing product right, our ingredients right when we're doing the show. We need to hold them for six seconds. So, so well, you count and, and tell her when she can put it down. <laughs> So this is um, freshly grated nutmeg. If you've uh, n never had a fresh grated nutmeg, it's so much more flavorful than the, when you buy it already powdered. Yeah, Stephen is holding up what the nutmeg Six looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the grater that I use, although you can use a microplane with it too. And I've got some already here grated. So, you know, I, I'm glad you showed that. I think that this little instrument, it's so like old, versatile. but it's so versatile, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's like a, I used the box grater tonight also when I was making this cheese dip and you're used, you used, I, I used the, these guys, this end, and then you use this end, right? Yep. And it's just, it's, it's perfect and it cleans up really easily. You know, so everybody should have a box grater in their house. If they don't have a box grater, you know, you're living too much in the modern age. And so when you are, if you, I don't know if you could see the, I use the really fine side. When you're grating, um, well, when you're grating anything, you always have to be mindful of your fingers. Uh, <laughs> but nutmeg is tiny when you're holding it, so you have to be even more careful. But it's real easy. It's just simple. That's all I'm going to grate for you because I already did the rest. And and you know. Later, I think that we're going to ask uh, Dr. Yashu Sharma to tell us a little bit about nutmeg and about what covers it, because that's something else altogether, mace, right? And it's, it's all very interesting, uh, all the origins of these uh, amazing items that are used in the kitchen and for other purposes. So we're going to, I'm going to add the butter and, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to add the sugar to the butter, and then I'm going to cream it with the mixer so it's going to get a little bit loud here. You ready? Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm ready. I'm just going to talk while you do that. Oh, good. You broke the mixer, so that's excellent. See, mom Your mom is not going to like that, right? No. Yeah, she, she probably wanted it back, I'm sure. Now, while you do that, I'm going to move over here so that it's less noise, and we'll let you, do, we'll let you go about doing that. And, <laughs> and, and I see that your husband is concerned about the, the, uh, how much this is boiling away. Would you like me to turn it down a little bit? Okay, I'll turn, that's another dish that we're working on here. So I'll turn it way down, and uh, it'll probably be okay, you know, that way. <laughs> that's, that, that's a little bit later on in the show, but the smell is amazing. This is tomato and g fresh ginger. This one is not boiling. You need it to boil? Okay, so it's up as high as it'll go, so we'll let it, hope that it, uh, hold on. <laughs> I'll be back later. <laughs> now it'll boil faster. It'll be fine. Okay, so I, I wanted to talk, I just wanted to wax <laughs> uh, about, uh, I just wanted to go on for a minute or so about something that has been on my mind this week. There's a lot of talk all the time in the food industry about authenticity. The word authenticity is used a lot. And it's used, usually used in, in relation to whether uh, somebody's making food according to ancient tradition, you know, as far as the recipe is concerned, like a recipe that may have come down for hundreds of years or thousands of years, for example, and uh, is it being made in the traditional way? And if it's not being made in the traditional way, then it, is it still you know, good or the other side of the fence, of course, is, you know, if, you, if there isn't change, then there isn't progress. And so there's got to be change and evolution or else there is no progress. And of course, dishes throughout history have, first of all, foods have spread throughout the world so that the tomato, which is now so much used in Italy is, of course, not from Italy originally, and we can go on and on about all the other foods that have moved and migrated throughout the different countries and how each country has put their stamp on different ingredients and different foods. But there was one point that, that I really, what happened today was I was looking at an article about dishes that everyone should learn how to make. And it reminded me how I, I like to think about authenticity. I like to think about authenticity in a dish, for example, as just that if it has a history, if it has a culture behind it, such as, let's say, pesto alla Genovese. So where pesto originated, basil pesto from Genova, that if you're going to make it and call it pesto alla Genovese, then use the traditional recipe. If you're going to make it some way different, that's perfectly fine. It's great. I mean, it's, there's... 10 million riffs on pesto, right? Pesto means pound anyway. So there's a, there's a million different things. But don't call it pesto alla genovese if it's different than the traditional recipe. That's all I'm saying. So what happened today was I was looking at a recipe for one of my absolute favorite foods. If you recall, a number of months ago, I was supposed to make it on the show, but we ran out of time and I made it afterwards, which was good because it didn't turn out as well as I would like. Cacio e pepe, which has four ingredients. It has pasta water, pasta, pepper, and Pecorino Romano cheese. That's it. Very simple dish, very classical Roman dish. And this recipe today used butter. This is a chef in uh, the States. Nothing wrong with that. Cacio e pepe. Used butter, olive oil, and Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> no Pecorino Romano. And that's that's fine, and I'm sure it was abs it's an absolutely delicious dish, but that's not cacio e pepe. So call it something else. Call it, you know, Bob Smith's version of or, or whatever. And the reason I think is very important in terms of how we look at culture, and how we value history, and how we value tradition. By calling it cacio e pepe, we essentially rob anyone who doesn't really know the culture of the, and the history of that dish of that fun and joy of discovering, you know, what the richness is behind it. Instead, somebody now thinks, many people now think that that's cacio e pepe. And when they go to Rome, if they get the wonderful chance to go to Rome and they have that dish, they're probably going to be like, well, this isn't cacio e pepe, right? But 
of course it is. So anyway, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. And I, and I think that, as I said earlier, you know, the evolution of dishes and how things change and personal individual creativity that gets put onto a dish is absolutely critical for the progression of culinary um, you know, trends and traditions, new traditions to arise. But why don't we just call it something else you know, and, and, pre and preserve the original recipes or as close to the originals as possible? Yeah, I can get off my soapbox now. So um, as you can see, you all saw me add the blueberries in and mix them with the mixer. So the, the batter is a nice bluish purple. Can you all see that? Mm. It looks beautiful. Oh, yeah, you can use fresh. I just didn't have any. <laughs> so that's absolutely gorgeous. Now what's the next step, eating them? <laughs> oh, you have to cook them first, right? Well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage eating because of the raw <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so um, I'll add my fresh nutmeg here, which I forgot to do earlier. And then I'm going to add your, um, alternate the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients, which are, is a half a cup of milk and two cups of sifted flour in this bowl. So I will start doing that and then- So the first thing that goes in is the nutmeg and then after the nutmeg, you're gonna put a liquid ingredient? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And then after the milk, you're gonna add the flour? Right, well you alternate flour and milk. So okay. it's a little bit of this and then a little bit of that. Okay, and do you like doing it with a hand blender? Is that the easiest way to do it? I mean with a hand mixer, I mean? Well. No, I like to use my KitchenAid. Oh. <laughs> this is the first time I've used a hand mixer since I got married. <laughs> so I had to borrow it from my mom. Okay. So, That's, all right. Well, we're going to let you continue. And just okay. look at me when you need to tell us some more. And I'm going to have Dr. Yashi Sharma come up and tell us a little bit about what she's going to be making. Because I'm excited about, well, I'm excited about everything. So, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you for coming to the show and bringing the, this wonderful ingredient. Do you want to show it to everybody? Yes. Mm. This is uh, lemongrass. It's not a lulav in case anybody gets that joke, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lemongrass. I'm making rasam out of it. Rasam or... And rasam is a soup? Call as soup. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, like... Uh, it, it's like a soup or beverage, which is... Actually, this is lemongrass is good for, uh, it's a essential oil containing herb or it is known as the aromatic grass. It contains citrol, a lot of the antioxidants, vitamin A. It's good for indigestion. It reduces the blood cholesterol, good for, it reduces the hypertension. Mm. And it contains uh, vitamin A, which is good for the, and also the antioxidants, good for health. Mm. That's fantastic. So the thing that I asked you first was, where do we, first of all, locally, where do we get anything like this? Uh, most of the people here, I saw them growing this lemongrass herb. Like I saw like three, four people in my office also, they grow the lemongrass herb. Most of the, means they know about the lemongrass herb and most of them growing. The only thing is it cannot tolerate the winter here. Mm. So you have to uh, take it uh, inside in the winter. So or or you can, can you replant it in the spring also? Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, if you keep it outside, it won't sprout mm -hmm. like a mint or other plant. Mm -hmm. So it is sensitive to cold, so you have to keep, I mean, take it inside in the winter. Mm -hmm. So again, in the, like, uh, when the spring comes, you mm -hmm. can take it outside and plant it. Mm -hmm. It takes around three months to grow, and after that you can harvest till the spring ends or the summer ends. Wow. So, and it just grows as a, it's essentially, it's a grass, like it just looks yes, like it's yes. a wild grass. Yes. I so. like planted around like uh, two to three months back mm -hmm. and I got, I have harvested two times and this is the third time I am harvesting. Mm -hmm. Since it just grows in like month or 15 days, it just grows and new growth because here you will get the lot of rain and the lot of sun. So mm -hmm. it just grows. <laughs> and does it tolerate? heat and also yes, tolerates yeah. sun, uh, lots yes. of sunlight or? It needs a lot of sunlight mm -hmm. for growth. Mm -hmm. So you can also keep it inside, but the vegetative growth will not be much in mm -hmm. the inside. Mm -hmm. So always it is better to grow them 
in sun. Okay. Now, I was telling you that I've never seen, I mean, have most people seen this like this in this form? I mean, when you look at like the herbs that are available at, um, like in, in the health food stores or in, in other stores, like Melissa's herbs or whatever, in the little plastic container, it's more like rootish, you know, looking, you know, it's mm -hmm. more thick at the bottom, which I'm sure that's what they're kind of using. And it looks very dry for the most part. Okay, this is the dry herb, which I brought because I have harvested last time and the, I uh, distilled the essential oil and some herb, I dried it. Mm -hmm. So this can also be used for, means in winter, you can dry it and save it for winter. And will it have the same strength or, or not as the uh, fresh? It may not have the same strength, mm -hmm. but it, it has, it too has like uh, the aroma, so you can smell it, but it's not like as fresh. You have to slightly oh, yeah. rub it. Yeah, if, <laughs> if I don't drop, if I don't drop it, I'll, I can rub it. Yeah, it's it's not as yeah, strong yeah, as as, strong uh, as, as the as fresh, fresh, right? Yeah, everybody should try this later, by the way, and 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 just just rub it and. But the fresh is quite extraordinary, actually. Yeah. Wow, that's that is amazing. And this is also available in our farm, uh, the regenerative organic farm in in MEM. Okay, so available. so the university's regenerative agriculture department is also growing it. Growing and, and selling the selling it, yeah. Great. Okay. So now you're going to make this soup out of this. And now are we going to, are you going to use this entire stock? Is that yes, how you do the it? The whole herb I'm using. It is even for extraction of essential oil, the whole herb is used. I'm like making into small pieces and putting into the... Putting it in boiling water? Is that yes, what you're going to do? Yeah. It yeah. is like making tea, but the only thing is we are seasoning it with some of the spices. Okay. <laughs> so do you need me to get this boiling, your water again? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go back to talking to Christy. And uh, you can do, go just go about doing whatever you need to do, yeah. and I'll turn that up for you. And let's see what... Ah, yours is almost starting to boil. Okay? Almost, almost there. And I'm going to turn that all the way up. Yes. Good. All right. So now I have added the flour and the milk, and you can see the color is now a little bit not as bright as it was earlier. Can you see that over there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm going to add the rest of the blueberries. Did you notice he's counting six seconds now for us every time we show something? <laughs> it's great. So the color that comes after I fold these in is absolutely gorgeous wow it looks it just looks beautiful i i have never seen i've never seen a blueberry muffin like this i mean honestly and carolyn lived right next door i guess she didn't share them when <laughs> when we were there i guess not you had to ask for them yeah. so the first time i i had started dating my husband and um well, which is almost 20 dad. years ago right right and i called carolyn and asked her for the recipe for these uh, muffins and she gave them to me over the phone and um what I didn't say is, you saw me add the white stuff, it was baking powder and salt. I had, um, I re wrote one fourth teaspoon salt, but when I was making the muffins, I read four teaspoons of salt. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so excited to bake these for my husband and I pulled them, well, he was, I was dating him at the time, but I pulled them out of the oven and we, <laughs> they were so bad. <laughs> There was no, oh, they, I was so sad that I had to throw the whole thing away because they smelled good and looked great. And they were completely, yeah, salty. Ugh. So had you, let, let's just analyze this a little bit more. So this wasn't like the first date or the second date or anything like that. You you kind of. With, we hadn't been dating for a month yet. It was mm -hmm. still. And he stuck with you after he that. stuck with me. Yeah. yeah, apparently I had some other attributes he liked. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's that, that's good. It's good to know. <laughs> okay. On that note, I think I'm going to move back to Yashu. All right. So you actually did cut these into very small pieces. Okay, Jason, start counting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like you know, little like a half inch, inch thick. Yeah, half I mean, to half one inch. inch you can keep it two inch too. Means mm -hmm. it doesn't make that much difference mm -hmm. because we are boiling it. So once we boil it, so all the like the aromatic compound it come mm -hmm. out to the water and how long do you need to boil it for about 
three to five minutes. If yeah, it's probably. because if it's a, like a small one cup, you can just boil it for three minutes, two to three minutes. Because we are doing more, so we have to boil it a little mm -hmm. bit more mm -hmm. for about five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So it doesn't take very long to prepare this dish then? Yeah. yeah. For mm -hmm. one cup of like tea or a one cup of soup, you can use only one or two grasses. Only this is enough for making at least two to three people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like quarter gallon for quarter gallon you can use like two to three lemongrass leaves well i i love the fact that it's got so much you know, it has so many wonderful you know vitamins yeah. in it for us and also that it has these particular effects on the system so it's something that you can actually enjoy throughout the yeah, day helps, as a tea right yep yeah, it helps for healing of the cold and also fever it's really good for winter mm -hmm. so it helps for the uh if you have any respiration problem, it heals the rest and it makes clear the respiratory path and the lungs. In winter, it can be used with all the spices. Mm. We are adding a little bit of spices and jaggery, which helps for, again, it has a lot of medicinal properties. In that. that's, that's very interesting. So there's going to be a little bit of sweet added to this then, yes. because the jaggery is like, sugar isn't the right word, but it is sweet. Yes, mm -hmm. we just we are adding a little bit of the jaggery mm -hmm. and also uh, some of the spices. Okay, well, we'll get to those exact spices a little bit later, I'm sure. So you're filling these cups right now, the little muffin cups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See all those blueberries? Mm -hmm. this Lots. Is, this is the one time you want lumpy when you're baking. Lumpy batter. Okay, so that's, that's a, the texture we're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything runny. It should be lumpy. Well, right, lumpy with the blueberries. Hmm. I, I'm, I may have to try this to see what oh, yeah. it's like. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> have I held it up? Have I held it up long enough now? <laughs> this is this is gonna wear thin. Very. It probably already has actually, but but uh, all right. Let me just dig right in. Hope nobody minds. Oh my gosh. Those are so good. Mm. Mm. They are really fabulous. This, these muffins are actually, um, my kids have uh, um, asked for them for multiple years on their birthdays instead of a birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the one thing about muffins, a lot of times when you get muffins out, uh, they're dry. Uh, and they, again, you know, they're, if it's a blueberry muffin, sometimes you're, look, I remember, you just, I just remembered this. I got a blueberry muffin somewhere. This is like a number of months ago. There was one blueberry in the blueberry muffin. I, I was horrified. I mean, I was just like, how in the world can you call this a blueberry muffin? There's one blueberry in it, you know? Traveling in an airport? Yeah, it was, I probably was. Yeah, I probably was traveling in an airport. Anyway, this is, this is a blueberry muffin. I mean, that is blueberry solid through and through and through. So just really delicious. Fantastic. All right. Anything else that you need to tell us about this? Yeah. That, that The secrets, those... You want to repeat those secrets because I think those were good, actually. Those are really important. So when you're making your batter, you add a half a cup of blueberries and mix it in with your beaters. The rest of the blueberries, after you finish the batter, you uh, fold, in the blue, fold them in. And then um, use fresh grated nutmeg. Mm. And then also, which I will show you here, the final step before baking is, do you see this? Well, here. <laughs> Can you see uh -uh. this? Like mm, brown crust on. on the top of the muffin. Mm -hmm. That is from sprinkling. Mm. Patty. Somebody pass this to her before she has to go. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to sprinkle some, uh, the rest of the nutmeg that I grated with some sugar. And then you add it to the top of the muffin before you bake. That's a nice little touch at the end. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, very, very nice. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, I mean, everybody else will look forward to uh, eating these later. I have enjoyed what I've um, tried. Really, really good. Okay. So thank you, Christy, very much. I'm glad that everything worked out with you and Terrell. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> hey, we're going on 20 years. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Okay. So it's already turning green color. Yeah, it's beautiful. Unfortunately, people are not going to be able to see that. Um, but if we could get... Um, Maybe I, I can take... Can you take a picture? Yeah, yeah that would be great. 
if you could, oh yeah, that would be great if you take a little bit out so we can all look at it. And um, possibly, where is, oh, there's a Neil. Uh, maybe somebody could take a picture of that because that is absolutely gorgeous. As long as you don't stand up in front of the camera there because then we'll, Jason will also get mad at us. And it's so aromatic. Yeah, yeah it's really, really. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is, <laughs> it is so aromatic. Yep. Amazing. So you don't need this much too, means I have added a little bit of more to get more fragrance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really, really, really lovely. Can, is it, can you guys smell it around here? Yeah, 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 it's, it's really great. So now what else are you going to add to this? Uh, after, the, after boiling for two minutes, I will remove the lemongrass okay so five six minutes or so of boiling yeah, yeah maybe and, yeah and then you're going to um just pour the water through a sifter or through through yeah, a strainer yes, i mean yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah i will just save it and then mm -hmm. add the uh, jaggery salt and some spices i will season it with some spices okay what spices are you going to use uh, cumin hing and Turmeric. Okay. And normally, I made a mistake and I bought cumin powder. Normally, you would yeah, use cumin seeds. Yeah, all cumin seeds are used, but mm -hmm. it's okay. We will use the... Do you have to toast those cumin seeds before? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before so, adding. Okay. So, if you're going to make this recipe correctly, you use cumin seeds and you toast the cumin seeds ahead of time. Yes. Okay. So, it's basically lemongrass boiled for five minutes. And then, and then you then, have to add the lemon too. Maybe we forgot the lemon today. The lemons that I left at home in the refrigerator. <laughs> right. Okay. Now what do we... Hi, Riley. <laughs> Would you care? Yes, that would be awesome. We need how many? Oh, it's okay. No problem. At the end of the recipe, we are right. adding the lemons. I know, but how many does she need to go get? Two. Two. Two fresh lemons. Okay, thank you. Just put it on my account, right? <laughs> you do that anyway every day when you shop, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, yes, I have three lemons in my refrigerator. Beautiful. We'll use those. That'll be that'll be great. All right. So I'm gonna I'm going to. Well, do you need to do something else right now or not? No, it's just uh, like boiling mm -hmm. another two minutes, mm -hmm. and then I will save it and add all, all the things. Okay. And again, I will bo boil it for well, a couple of minutes, all right. and then I will do the seasoning. At the end, we are adding the lemon and serving. Okay, so I'm a little unclear. So you're going to strain this, yes. and then you're going to get it back to a boil, yes. and then you're going to add the seasoning at that point. And it's all to taste then the seasoning, basically? Yes, mm -hmm. mainly to get the aroma of the spices at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, sounds great. So we'll see you in a few minutes then. Yes. All right, and now we're, oh, that's rice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, I mean, it's finished. It, no, uh, it's not finished. Still cooking. Okay, we're going to leave it with the lid on still? Do you want the lid on still or not? Yes, okay, sorry. I didn't. Reduce the heat to two? Okay, you got it. It is reduced. All right, so. <laughs> Wait, were we holding something up? I didn't think so, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, you know, you know what this is? <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about this later. So another thing that we had was uh, I made, you can start counting. I made, I made this cheese dip uh, and that everybody who's been here has had the opportunity to um, taste. And it's really simple to do. It's just going to take uh, a couple of minutes. And the ingredients are cream cheese. I prefer Milton Creamery Quark, but it wasn't available today. So, but that's a lot better than cream cheese and it adds more of a tang to this. And then you need some type of sharp sh cheese. So I used a sharp cheddar. I used Organic Valley sharp cheddar, but you can use any kind of, so th this recipe can be modified very, very easily. So two, for, for this size jar or container, I used two packages of cream cheese one, uh, about uh, three quarters of an eight ounce package of Organic Valley Sharp Cheddar. I used uh, some, some uh, Veginase, the grape seed oil Veginase. I used a big tablespoon just to add more creaminess to the whole um, thing. 
And then I also uh, used a little bit of a hot sauce. So again, whatever hot sauce you like, just add a little bit of hot sauce to it. I didn't use much because I wasn't sure, you know, how much people would like. And then I also, one of the key ingredients is Annie's Worcestershire sauce. So Annie's Worcestershire sauce adds a lot of flavors, you know, to this. And last, a mustard. Again, a mustard of your choice. I used Beegis. I think that's how you say it. Bochis. Thank you so much. Bochis. Uh, and uh, it's got some, you know, nice tang to it. Um, but you could also use some horseradish. That would be really good. It would add another layer to, to it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, but the great thing about this dip is that it works perfectly as far as you can get so many different kinds of flavors out of it based on what kind of mustard you use or whether you use horseradish or how much Worcestershire sauce you use or, you know, how much hot sauce. So it's great because you can make it to your own custom. You can custom it perfectly to your own taste. And it's a lot of fun. And the easiest way to do it, by the way, is to let the cream cheese, which you wouldn't have to do with the cork, <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> but let the cream cheese sit out for several hours and then put it into your into your KitchenAid <laughs> because it really mixes everything very nicely uh, along with the other ingredients. And that's it. Nothing else to it. You're done. So that's that's a great thing to do for a party. And parties are always good. So all right. Nirja, come on up. Let's talk. So this is Nirja Maheshwari of Heavenly Fresh Foods, <laughs> and 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 uh, you are going to make what? I'm making um, kofta curry with paneer, uh, veggie paneer, and loki. <laughs> so it's all mixed. And this loki was grown in your garden, right? Yes, mm. I have at least sixty or seventy loki in my garden. This year, I don't know what happened. <laughs> now, this is another, this is another, this is a squash that has a lot of healthy properties oh, to it. A lot. Actually, in India, is uh, uh, people say if you drink juice out of it, it, it cleans your all your arteries and you'll not have a heart problem. <laughs> so it's very good for health and it's tasty as well. Mm -hmm. It's very versatile. You can use in many dishes because it doesn't have its own taste. So in anything you will put, it will absorb that taste, and mm. so it's good. Perfect. All right. So I know you've been on the show before, and you come from Rajasthan originally, mm -hmm. and but you said that because I asked you about this, you said this dish is Rajasthani inspired, inspired. but not. Mm -hmm. It is actually um, Rajasthani dish because loki kofta I make which is Rajasthani, but I added like paneer and all other stuff. So it's a mix of my own dish, which I created. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you said paneer isn't used very much in Rajasthan. No, no, no. We yeah. use paneer, but... Uh, not with, in this dish. With, not with this dish. Mm -hmm. Paneer we use separately in different dish, mm -hmm. but I combined it two, three dishes together. <laughs> it came out good, so... <laughs> By the way, paneer is a fresh cheese. Okay, so maybe explain. So what is a kofta? Kofta is a grated uh, ghee, loki. It's, we say ghee and loki both. Grated uh, loki, and then I put uh, besan. Besan is a chick flour, chick chickpea pea flour, flour mm -hmm. or but it's gram not flour. right gram flour. But it's not exactly the same. I mean, you can't go and grind chickpeas like no, we're used to here. No, same. it's a gram flour. It's a different kind of dal, mm -hmm. and it's. Uh, powder of that and we use that and all the spices and then make round balls and fry them. Mm. So kofta curry is a one di different dish which is totally Rajasthani, mm -hmm. which I added my own version of <laughs> mm -hmm. in this curry. Mm -hmm. So where are those little kofta balls? I want to see those. Okay. Yeah, I want to see. Oh, yeah. Okay, you have six seconds. Hold those up. <laughs> 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 That's okay. I can do. Yeah, they look great. Okay, so 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 I just fried them at home and brought it here. Okay, so it's the loki squash loki and paneer squash. and no, no paneer just and... just the loki squash yeah. and paneer. spices and basin flour. That's that's what's in the kofta itself, right? 
Oh, maybe it's with my lemons. And, and, uh, the paneer maybe is with my lemons in my refrigerator at home. Just joking. But, but, he, but you don't, I don't know. I go, we're we're going to have to do on a paneer hunt right now. So. I them and left it in the Okay. All right. And Neil's going to go home and get, we don't, you know, has Riley left yet? Because you could get their lemons, but she's already gone, right? Okay, never mind. This is this show is what you know. None of us must have been Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts around here. That's all I can say. Because be prepared is not <laughs> what we're doing. So I want to also, you know, while we wait for for all that stuff, I want. to... <laughs> are we good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's okay. You know, I understand completely. Yeah, so you won't find it in there. Don't keep looking. It's not going to be in there. Okay. So, all right. Tell us a little bit about. So, first, you make the kofta. Yeah, I just fried them. Mm -hmm. And in what uh, kind of oil? Grapeseed oil. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I fried. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're just little tiny guys. It's like a right. tiny. I mean, do you think I should taste that too? Yeah. Sure. I mean, probably. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now, let me ask you a question. Is this mean? Okay. When I'm sitting here eating it? Yeah. No. Uh, okay. oh. And then, anyway. uh, mm, they are good. Go here. All right. Tell us what's happening here. This is tomato with ginger, and I put some ghee in it, and uh, seasoning ghee, and then cumin mm. seeds. And then I. What was that? I grinded tomato and uh, ginger. Mm -hmm. And put in that ghee, so it's cooking right now. We can Turn up. increase, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can put nine. Mm. So it's just fresh tomato fresh and fresh tomato. ginger. Yeah, just uh, I put in boiled water, so all the skin will be easy to remove. Mm -hmm. I don't like skin in my curry, so I always remove tomato peels and just grind it with ginger. And in ghee, I uh, put um, ghee or oil, you can use any, mm -hmm. um, any kind of oil or ghee is better always. <laughs> and then put cumin seed, whole cumin seeds, and then tomato ginger paste, you can. Okay, so it's just whole cumin seeds, yeah. tomato, fresh tomato with the peels mm -hmm. removed, gin fresh ginger, and anything else, or, and ghee. Okay. That's it. Okay. And it's going to cook. You want to cook it for about, what, 15, 20 minutes, something the like that? The water will evaporate. Uh, until all the water evaporates yeah. in the tomatoes. And okay. then I'll put all the spices, which is turmeric. Uh, it's a very mild red chili powder and salt. Mm. Now, what's this What's this called? This, this is a masal dan, we say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the spices pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's going to have, again, it's going to have a little mild red chili powder. Very mild. This mm -hmm. is very mild. And it gives color, the like red color. It, mm -hmm. In India, like, curry has red color. It, it's, it's a good thing, like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But. So, mild chili powder, and then again, what else? Uh, turmeric powder and salt. Okay. Is and that red black red salt? Uh, or no, regular salt? Uh, it's a Himalayan pink salt. Okay. All right. And uh, Should you turn this down a little bit? No, I just have to just okay. do like this. Okay. Okay, so cumin seed, the only spices are in here. Cumin seed, mild red curry powder, mild red pepper, I'm sorry, and, and uh, turmeric, and a little salt. bit of uh, salt. And then garam masala. This is like a oh. garam masala, which... It's Which homemade. is a spice mixture, right? <laughs> See, now you're, because you were going to leave that out and then we weren't going to know. It was like the secret ingredient, right? <laughs> it's still secret because it's homemade. Right. <laughs> you can and, and you're not going to tell us what's in it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it has nutmeg, uh, clove, cardamom, black pepper, mm. all those ingredients. And uh, that's uh, coriander seeds. So all everything you can get from Indian store. This one, garam masala. There are many different kinds. Sorry, there are many different kinds of garam masala, obviously. It's and only one kind. It's only one kind of garam masala. But making of people sometimes they don't put 
clove. Right. They don't put black <laughs> pepper. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Everybody does their own version, like yeah. their own home spun version. This is my mom's recipe mm -hmm. and it's made in India. So I use that in in my every curry. <laughs> and and they always it always comes in a Nutella jar. <laughs> Indian garam masala. Okay. Excellent. I bring like big box from India and freeze it. So oh. I can like it can last one year, two year. Oh yeah, and you know, that's very, very smart because yeah. normally powdered spices they have a very you know limited shelf life. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why when you buy powdered spice we you should really if you can you should always buy whole spices um and then toast them yourself and grind them. But if you buy powdered spices, you always want to buy them in a place that goes through spices quickly, because otherwise, you know, you're not going to get much potency. I saw you, Riley, running, you know, across the state. We're good. You're with the lemons. She's got the lemons, so we're good. Now all we need is the paneer, and we can actually, you know, finish finish these dishes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So let me just check one more time. Okay, you go ahead and do that. And oh yeah, that's that's definitely. Do you want me to turn it down a little bit? Oh, you already did turn it down. Okay, excellent. Okay. And then uh, now with this curry, I have to put, like, I already chopped all these loki. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add that. Do you and peel the loki or not? Uh, usually if it's that clean, I don't, mm -hmm. because it's homegrown and it's good. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we're using the loki squash, chopped loki squash and carrot. Carrot. Mm -hmm. And then peas. Peas, yeah, peas are something that's very difficult to get fresh, that's for sure. Yeah. So we've got so organic I'll green peas. Add all these things and uh, paneer in it. And so all of this is going to be added to this, this tomato, yeah. ginger, cumin seed base. Okay. And then, then cook. I add spices. More spices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't add, I think, turmeric. Oh, okay, the turmeric still. Oh. And so you're going to cook that for about how long? 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 10 to 15, mm -hmm. maybe it depends on if it's too hard, then it's, it's till it's become tender. Till the vegetables become tender, not California style. So okay. nice and soft. And the rice is done. And then so it's going to be served over the rice, basically. Yeah. You can eat with rice. This can be eaten with naan or chapati, with anything, actually. Mm -hmm. Sounds quinoa. wonderful. Quinoa? You can eat It's very quinoa. Indian. We, we do eat here with quinoa sometimes. Uh -huh. It's very good. I, I'd rather eat it with rice, so I'm glad to say this would be basmati rice. Basmati rice. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Basmati rice. With rice, I just, uh, one rice, two cups water, put cumin seeds, a ghee, like, you know, a teaspoon of ghee, two teaspoon of ghee, and salt. Okay. So, so that's that's always nice the because... Jeera it, rice, we say, jeera means cumin, cumin seeds. So jeera rice goes with anything, with any curry, with any dal. Cumin seed rice. Cumin seed rice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it spices up the rice a little bit. It makes it a, a little Light, bit better. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's not too much spice, but it gives little flavor mm -hmm. to it. And probably also it's aids digestion, too, I would think, yes. with the cumin seed. Yeah, cumin seeds is very good for digestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now, is everything going to be put in there? The kofta balls, too, are going to be put into this, yeah. too? And the paneer when it comes. Yes. Okay, so everything gets put into the sauce. All right. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks absolutely wonderful. Tell us a little bit about Heavenly Fresh Foods. What's that? Heavenly Fresh Foods, uh, I just came up with the name, but uh, I make food and sell in farmer's market and sell to sell it to everybody's. And people like it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you do this as more of a hobby, right? Be hobby, yeah, it's like hobby. I do have my regular job mm -hmm. but this one is my side by mm -hmm. thing and so i've had some great stuff from you that i really have enjoyed so some roti chapati ro pani roti roll mm -hmm. uh, veggie pani roti roll mm -hmm. i same curry with rice i give to whole foods mm -hmm. and i give uh, not whole foods <laughs> everybody's and uh, roti with the uh, cauliflower potato curry mm -hmm. Now, can, can you explain the difference between chapati and roti? These are two it breads. The same thing, it's just a two different name for one thing. Hmm. Yeah. But the flour is the same too? Yeah, everything is same. Chapati, roti, like... Is it, d is it geographical then? They no, call it chapati no, yeah, in one... kind of chapati. We say roti in Rajasthan. Many people uh, say chapati. So it's the same name for... Paratha is different. Mm -hmm. Paratha is pan fried. Mm -hmm. Um, but roti is like, roti and chapati is same thing. Okay. And it's and made out of whole wheat flour? Whole wheat flour. Mm -hmm. And you don't put ghee or oil 
on top of pan. It's dry. It's cooked, mm -hmm. you take it out and put ghee on top of it. So the whole f cooking process is a dry cooking process. Dry cooking, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, do you sometimes put it on top of uh, 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 an open flame at the end to have yes, it puff up? The pop up, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just can hold, and the, it will pop up. Yeah, it's kind of it's fun. Balloon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun when it, when it when it does that. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, tell us. I think this sounds like it's something that we can easily make at home. Actually, oh, yeah, it's not very mm -hmm. difficult. It's mm -hmm. it's very easily made. The only thing this you have to fry, and it's like. Mm -hmm. This can be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also, and I assume that you can adjust the spicing to any yeah, level that you want. On, uh, some people lead, uh, in India, we put green chili also with, uh, mm. yeah, but uh, here people don't eat too spicy food. So mm -hmm. I, even everybody's I give, I don't put green chili in it. Mm -hmm. Because green chili is so unpredictable. You know, it's uh, like sometimes it's hot and, mm -hmm. you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to predict. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the this other dish that I really like a lot and I can't pronounce? What is that? Bissi Belavad. <laughs> Say that again? Bissi <laughs> Belavad. And what is that? Because it's like, you, you said it's like a kitchery. A, you want to explain it? For, for South India. Mm -hmm. It is from South India. Uh, but it has all the vegetables, dal, rice, and it has all kinds of spices. So it's good. It's kind of an Ayurvedic dish, I can say. Mm -hmm. It's all the spices. The, the thing about it is uh, that and if you get a chance to, to look it up, um, maybe you'll tell people how to spell it because uh, they, they can look it up and see. But the thing about this particular dish that struck me and also struck Rachel is that when you eat it, it just feels so good. You know, it just feels like you're being nourished from the inside. Oh, yeah. And it's it's quite extraordinary. It's 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 just a wonderful, um, satisfying type of dish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, because it has everything. It's had protein. It has carbohydrate. You know, it has all the spices. Mm -hmm. All the flavors, sweet, the sour, flavors, salty. Sweet, yeah, everything, actually. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sour, everything. Mm -hmm. All the flavors are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. Okay, so we're going to let you finish this. We don't want to get in your way. And um, Yashu, what what do you have to tell us about the re this? Tell us how we finish this so wonderful. I have like saved the uh, lemongrass. I have removed the uh, the boiled or it is known as spent. I have removed the spent and the only liquid I kept over there. Right, so and the liquid is is uh, actually got a very uh, yellow t tint to it, yes. right? Uh huh. And then I have added uh, jaggery, mm -hmm. around two tablespoons of jaggery. About two tablespoons. Yeah. So this is uh, about five. Let's, what did we figure? This five is about liters. five liters. Like a gallon, a gallon and quarter of. Flour. Okay, so a gallon and a quarter, but some of it's out. So it's about a gallon, yeah. and to that you you added um, a, how much again of the jaggery? Uh, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Okay. And then around two tablespoons, uh, three tablespoons of uh, salt. Mm -hmm. Any salt you can add it. Mm -hmm. And then I have added around a uh, little bit of the uh, pepper, mm -hmm. pepper powder. Black pepper. Yeah, as per you were like, if you like a spicy one, you can add a more mm -hmm. uh, pepper. I have added. Uh, Around half a tablespoon so a spoon of the pepper. And you're using black pepper, so you wouldn't use, for example, uh, red pepper or, or uh, uh, green chilies or anything like that. No, in this soup we add uh, like black pepper because mm -hmm. it is uh, good for, again, uh, in winter, especially in winter. Mm -hmm. So this is good for, uh, like, clear the respiratory path or mm -hmm. breathing. Mm -hmm. And it also helps to overcome the cold and fever. It makes you warm. Nice. <laughs> okay, we need to remember that because yes. it's coming, right? Yeah. yeah so we, if we know. you are using that in like in summer season, add a little bit of less black pepper. You can just have it with the lemon and mm -hmm. uh, just salt. If you don't like salt, you can just have it without any spices, mm -hmm. without adding anything. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to add still some cumin. Yes, cumin seeds I'm doing normally. Seasoning now, mm -hmm. so it's ready for seasoning. Mm -hmm. It's done mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. Just I have to add. I will uh, switch off now mm -hmm. from the flame. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Zero, yeah. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and then now I will add the seasoning. Mm -hmm. 
and then lemon at the end. So it's fresh squeezed lemon. Yes. Is that to taste basically? Yeah, it's mainly to add the sour taste to the... So it's, it's just going to boost it up another level yes, basically. So yeah. a little bit of acid at the end to just really... Yes, whoosh, yeah. right. Just to get a taste of the mm. little bit sour, little mm. bit hot, mm. sweet and mm. salty taste. Nice. Like a soup. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called as rasam. Rasam means it's actually, it can be uh, uh, consumed before food and also during food. It helps to increase the taste bud. Mm. It makes you like, uh, it helps for digestion and also it makes your food more tastier than the normal <laughs> mm. wonderful sounds fantastic okay. thank, you thank you so much you. okay we can't i can't wait to try that i'm really i'm really excited i can't whoa i can't wait to get some some of this because i i think it it's it's just a fantastic ingredient so i wanted to mention a couple of other things i love do you how many of you listen to podcasts yeah, a few people. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned different food podcasts over the, over uh, the, the years to people, but I think that uh, there's a couple that I really want to call your attention to right now. David Chang, who is uh, one of the most famous chefs uh, right now, uh, he has a basically a, an empire all over the world, uh, the Momofuku Empire, we'll call it, and he just opened in Los Angeles uh, in January, I think, his first place there uh, to rave reviews, and he's a very interesting guy. He He's definitely um, not any person you could put into a box, and as a chef, if you want to know about him as a chef, you should read the article that was in the New York Times last week about him. So if you just go to the New York Times and Google David Chang, you'll you'll learn quite a bit about him because you, one of the most amazing things that you'll learn is that he finds people to head his restaurants having a, an empire all over the world, you know, he can't be everywhere. And he finds people who are not only amazing talents but they put their own stamp on things. So it's a very interesting management system in the sense of being able to encourage people to uh, develop their own individual um, approach to uh, dishes and having them in charge of the restaurants in your like uh, little empire. Anyway, he has a podcast, the Dave Chang podcast, fantastic podcast, uh, something that uh, he has guests on that are not even necessarily uh, have anything to do with the food world at times, but it's really great. Uh, two weeks ago, he had J.J. Redick on. Anybody who, an NBA basketball fan here? J.J. Redick is, he plays for the Philadelphia 76ers, and he, before that, he played for uh, the Los Angeles Kings for a number of years, and played for somebody else for a number of years, too, that I'm just blanking out on right now. But anyway, he's with the 76ers right now. He has his own podcast, which is, uh, I think it's just J.J. Reddick, but uh, he's a fantastically interesting guy. And on his podcast, if you look through, you'll see that he's interviewed in the last few months Grant Akats from Chicago and also Missy Robbins from New York. And so I recommend that you listen to, to that because it'll give you a, an interesting look into... Um, you know, how somebody who's a non-chef, uh, but somebody who's very interested in food and uses food uh, in important ways to maintain his his uh, health, nutrition, et cetera, during a grueling NBA season. So it gives you some, some, um, some insights into that. Eat This Podcast is another one I want to tell you about, because in August, Every Day featured a short story, four to five, six minutes about grains. And it's a history of grains and uh, very interesting so I highly recommend you take a look at that. And the last thing that I want to mention is a brand new podcast by Yotam Otolenghi. If you've never heard of Yotam Otolenghi, look him up because he's an amazing chef in England. Uh, his latest book is Simple Pleasures. And we had the pleasure of eating at one of his restaurants downstairs at Nopi, which is, it was a great meal. And his first episode is out now. And he interviews on the first episode um, Nadia Hussein, who won the Great British Bake Off about three years ago. And uh, so it's a very uh, interesting episode. I think that's about it. I want to thank all of you for being here. It's been fun. I know that we can't wait to eat all this great food. Nir Jamashwari, thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And Yashu Sharma, thank you. Thank you so much. And, <laughs> and Christy, well, she's over looking at her. I guess, you know, it's, you know, was there anything interesting that you're finding in there on your phone? 
<laughs> work. Okay, great. All right. Well, I just want to see how boring we were here. So I just tried to figure that out. And we're really looking forward to your blueberry muffins. Thank you, Jason Strong from Fairfield Media Center. Thanks to the people at Green Building Supply, of course, for always hosting us and everybody's Whole Foods. Fantastic supplier of all the great foods that we're uh, using every week. We'll be back with Great Taste again on Tuesday, October 2nd. And then the following show in November is Wednesday, November 7th. Thank you very much for coming and for watching. Great taste. Sweet. Sour. So good to taste.